Hello everyone, welcome back to Easy Education London and today we are looking at the 11 plus specifically the non-verbal reasoning or one out. Now a top tip in answering these types of questions is to follow an acronym. So the acronym we have here is called SNAPS. So as you can see on the left hand side S stands for the following. So if you start off with S, S stands for uh, shape. So you need to look at the shape. Uh, what type of shape is it? Is it a pentagon? Is it an hexagon? Um, is it a circle, a square, etc.? So you need to look at each individual option. Look at the shape. Are they exactly the same? Can you spot a pattern or are they all slightly different? The second one, N. So for snaps, the second letter is N. N stands for number. So here we need to look at the number of things. For example, the number of lines the number of dots, okay, uh, the number of sides. So you need to compare and see if there are any differences. Um, and main, main thing is to find consistency. What is consistent throughout the options? And you'll generally see, especially for odd one out, that there is a consistent pattern in terms of the number of sides, the number of dots, etc. And then you'll be able to cancel out and find the odd one out. The third one is A, which stands for angle. So you need to look at the angle. Um, is, there a, is there a turn uh, in each option? So does the angle change or is the angle consistent? The next letter is P, so position. So look at the positioning of things. Where is it located? Where is it positioned? Is it in the corner? Is it in the middle? Is it towards the top? Is it towards the bottom? Next up, we have S, which stands for size. So look at the size of items, the size of things, the size of the dots, the size of the lines, the size of the shapes. These are all things that will help you work out the odd one out. And finally, the last S stands for shading. So look at the shading. What is shaded in and what is not shaded in. So you need to find the patterns there and see which one is odd one out in terms of that. So if you use snaps, it will help you answer these types of questions for nonverbal reasoning. And it's the same thing I use to teach my students to tackle their NVR or nonverbal reasoning. So you, you work through each one as you go through it um, mentally, or you can even make a note on your exam paper on the side and help you to work through this uh, as well. So we've got these three questions to work through today. Um, so let's look at question number one. Um, so straight away, if I look at the options A, B, C, D, and E, um, I can already see there are, in fact, um, sh uh, obviously shapes. But specifically, if we count how many uh, the sides there are, okay, we can already see there are five, okay? And they are all, in fact, an example of a pentagon, okay, because it's got five sides. So that is already ticked off. We know that um, there's no particular option, which is the odd one now, as they are all um, a pentagon. Um, and then we can move on to the number. So if you look at the number, you want to look at what is consistent throughout. Um, so for example, if we look at the lines and the dots, so for A, we've got two dots and four lines. So essentially what's happening in A, uh, the number of dots will lead to a double in the number of lines. So two dots equals four lines. B, um, again, if we look at B, it should be one, two, three. So we've got three lines and we've got one, two dots. So again, so this seems inconsistent. Um, and then C, you may look at in further detail and see what's happening here. Um, so you've got one, two, three, four, four dots and one, two, three, four, five lines. D, we've got three dots and four lines, and E, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines, and one, two, three, four, five, five dots. So when you look at it, you just skim and scan and see, can you figure out any differences or any consistencies you can find throughout? Now, one thing that you may have noticed here is if I look at B, if I look at C, uh, if I look at D and E, what I've noticed already is that if you see there's two dots here one and two two dots but in fact there is one two three lines so when you have two dots you have three lines so one extra line 
let's have a look at C. So we've got one, two, three, four. We've got four dots followed by one, two, three, four, five lines. So there's a difference plus one here. And also with B plus one. D, we've got one, two, three, three dots followed by one, two, three, four, four lines. Okay, so again, what you've noticed here, okay, there's a plus one difference. So what is the plus one difference? So for each, um, for the number of dots, there's always an extra uh, line on the other half as well. So again, that same pattern is observed in D. And E, if we look at it in further detail, we've got one, two, three, four, five, five dots, and one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines. And yes, that also follows the rule and the pattern. Now, if you look at A, you've got two dots, right? So if we've got one and two dots. So if it's if it's following this pattern, we should have three lines, but it doesn't. It's got one, two, three, four. Okay. So that already showed you that this one is clearly the odd one out. So the answer for number one should be in fact A. Okay. So if you were already thinking that, that is in fact the correct answer. So if you got this one correct, well done. Have a go at question two and question three. Pause the video and have a go and then pr uh, press play and then we'll go over the remaining parts of the answer. Now moving on to question two, following snaps, let's have a look at which one is the odd one out. So let's look at the shapes. Um, so if you look at A, B, C, D and E, you can clearly see there are different shapes in each um, option. So we can't really find any consistency. Now let's look at the number. So Let's have a look at the black shapes and compare it with the white shape. So for A, the number of sides you've got is four uh, for the black shape. And for the white shape, the number of sides you have is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's four, two, eight. Okay. So it goes from four to eight for number uh, for option A. Uh, for B, it goes from three to one, two, three, four, five, six. So let me just make a note of that. So it goes from four to eight. And then for B, one, two, three. So this is the number of sides. So from three to one, two, three, four, five, six, three to six. So you can see it's doubled here. Yeah? So that's the pattern you can see in terms of number. If you look at snaps, N stands for number. So the number is doubled. So the number of sides is doubled. Um, and for C, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it goes from six to one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it goes to six to twelve. So you can clearly see a pattern. You can see a consistency here that is being doubled. Uh, for D, again, let's have a look at this. For the black, it goes one, two, three, four, five, and it should go to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, okay. So it goes to eight. So that already raises question marks. And E goes from one, two, three, four, goes from four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Okay. So here, if you look and observe, we're comparing the number. Okay, the number of sides. Now, clearly, if we look at A, B, C, and E, um, the number of sides it actually doubles from the black shape to the white shape. Now, the odd one out clearly must be D. The reason being. It goes, hang on. The reason being is the black shape, it has five sides, but the white shape has eight sides, so it hasn't doubled. So for the, for that reason, the odd one out is, numbered, is option D. So if you chose option D as the odd one out, well done. That is in fact the correct answer. So this is how you'd approach the um, odd one out style questions in your 11 plus exams. So I hope that makes sense for you. Um, so again, it's a systematic and a, a methodical way to approach these types of questions. And the last question for this video, question three, um, you probably have answered this. If not, pause the video now because we are going to go over it in, in further detail. And we'll explain how you can use snaps to answer this question. So when you look at options A, B, C, D and E, you need to look at snaps and observe what criteria uh, needs to be looked at in further detail. So for example, um, if we look at S, the shapes, again, we can look at the shapes 
you can look at the numbers, you can look at the angles, the position, the size, the shading. But often you look at shape and number hand in hand, they overlap. So if we look at the shape and the numbers, we've got we've got squares and we've got raindrops, okay, across the um, options. But what's significant here is if we look at, for example, the number of lines at the bottom, right? So if you look at A, so the number of lines, we've got one, two, three, three lines at the bottom, and that leads to three raindrops. One, two, three. So it's three and three. So if you look at uh, if you look at A for for example, you've got three lines at the bottom as mentioned with three raindrops. So three and three. And then you've got two squares. So you've got three lines with two squares. Now what what we can notice is that the number of squares it actually goes two, two, one, three, and three. So there's no sort of consistency here. But if we look at the raindrops, let's see if we can spot a pattern. So you've got three lines and three raindrops in A. For B, you've got two lines and two raindrops. For C, you have one line and three raindrops. For D, you have four lines, one, two, three, four, and four raindrops. And E, you have one line with one raindrop. So one thing that you've noticed, if you look at snaps, okay, so if I just scroll up here, the number N, okay, if you look at the N for snaps, the number of lines is the same as the number of raindrops. So if you look at A, got three lines and three raindrops. B, two lines and two raindrops. It's exactly the same. So A and B, they follow that pattern. The number of lines, three lines will equal three raindrops. The number of lines in B, two lines will equal two raindrops, etc. So that's the pattern. C, you should observe the same. So you've got one line. It should have one raindrop, but it doesn't. It's got three. So clearly C is the odd one out. And if you're unsure, you can look at and clarify with D and E. D has four lines and also four raindrops. And E has one line and one raindrop. So therefore, um, the answer is in fact C. So the odd, uh, or the odd one out for question three would be C. So if you had chosen C as the odd one out, that is in fact the correct answer. And I hope you found this video informative and beneficial. This was a simple yet effective way to approach your 11 plus non-verbal reasoning. Um, so learn this, apply it in your exams for your NVR exams, which are fast approaching in September. So I hope you found this beneficial. Please subscribe, like and share for more as we are planning to create more revision videos for your 11 plus exams. If you have any questions, anything you'd like to ask, please leave them in the comment section below. Do make sure to follow our social media at Easy Education London um, on Instagram as well. Thank you for watching.